So today we were just going to talk about gin and the basics of gin. And as I wait for my colleague and friend Sharon from the Diageo Bar Academy or the Diageo Luxury Portfolio from Kenya to join in the conversation, we are going to be talking about tankery. <clears throat> Most of you guys know about London Dry Gin. So I've seen Batenda Brian join in the conversation. Give me a minute, Batenda. How are you, Brian? So, yes, today we're going to just talk about the basics of gin. Uh, so, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know what question do you guys have about gin just before Sharon goes on live. I don't know what's taking up the conversation or the network feed. But um, I'm going to talk about the production and uh, definitely a lot. It seems that um, it's not connecting. So as I wait, <coughs> sorry, sorry about that. That's a call I'm getting. But um, yeah, stay safe, sanitize. And um, yes, let me just wait for Sharon to go in live. Then we can start this. Brian, if you have a question, please feel free to ask. Uh, let me try to connect to you again. Hello, Brian, can you hear me? Yes, Virginia. Good morning. Morning. How are you doing, brother? Fine, thank you. So, have you been. What is your now? E COVID nineteen in uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank God, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. I'm how is uh, how is life on the other side of town? Uh, we just trying to keep safe. You no, know, trying to be indoors as much as we can. So sometimes situations, you no, know, force us to go out, but we just try to at least keep social mm -hmm. distance, sanitize, and at least. Uh, and this social some... is a problem yeah, with Africans. Hey. So it's a quite a problem. We are used to being so social. <laughs> eh? Another, it's hectic. It's think? hectic. Yeah, it's so. Mm -hmm. It's something that you know. It's not part of our culture. You know. Yeah, it's it's so, going to be a very good thing. But you know, these are some of the things that medics are trying to advise us to actually try to adhere to. So we just have to at least uh, understand and try practice it because if that's the only way to keeping away ourselves away from the uh, virus thing, then we just have to yeah. try our best. Yeah. So what do you have so for us today? Today I was, uh, was going to talk about uh, the basics of gin with Sharon from uh, Diageo and uh, apparently I'm still waiting for her to join on live because yeah. I think this week has just been about talking about botanicals. I feel like it's high time we start talking about what are the botanicals, what botanicals we have in Africa, what are the different types of gin and uh, just see what we can work with. Yeah. I think this has been given us an opportunity to reflect on how to build our economy from the local produce. And you know me, I'm very big on uh, local craft gin. So yeah, yeah, about, yeah. Uh, I about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, so, but then also, you also have to take into consideration there are some brands which have been doing this for like 20 years and we need to appreciate them as well, you know, because they give us a foundation of how to make uh, the different jeans and stuff like that. That's so true. I see Sharon has joined in the conversation. Let me drop, if you can okay. drop, and then I can okay. call her back. Okay. Okay. So Sharon, if you can join on the conversation. Um, yes, there you are. Uh, Sharon, I'm waiting for you to join on the conversation. We were going to talk about... Um, this amazing tankery. So yes. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Good morning. Good How morning. have you been? I've been good. Thank you for asking. And you? I've been good. Just reading a lot. Uh, just researching a lot. Yeah. Okay. What are you? Yeah. What are you researching on now? So uh, right now I'm researching on mezcal. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's all of those big, interesting things that are coming up. Okay. Cool. 
I mean, cool, cool, the, cool, the cool. entire week I've been spending my time doing uh, a lot about gene. So you can imagine just uh, gene from Africa, gene from uh, Asia and all this, and just trying to kind of understand the differences. Okay. Because they're not, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, tell us more. About it. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to join up on the conversation and just, uh, I know you've been big on uh, luxury portfolios. Yes. And for guys who know more about uh, what you're doing, can you just give us a brief history of what, what, I mean, how did you get here? What it took for you to be here? And especially as a woman in the industry, what are your challenges? Um, no challenges, actually. <laughs> If, if I'm being honest, how did I get here? It, it started actually a few years back. I wanted to join ABL from, uh, I think, five years ago. So when the opportunity popped up, um, I wasted no time in going in for the interview. Of course, because I'd been looking forward for this for such a long time, I already had done enough research. I had so much passion to join the company, so it was clearly evident that I was right fit, even when I went in for the interview. Um, to, to challenges, honestly, none. It, it, it's a great place to work in. Um, you get all the support you need, so there's absolutely no excuse as to why you cannot perform. I think the big, the big question is always, what is the one encouragement you give to women who want to join the industry? I think, I think that's, first of all, that's a very good question. Um, as a woman, you have an upper hand because there are very few female ambassadors. I don't even know of any other, maybe just Samia of Bacardi. Yeah. So I would encourage them because it gives you a voice of your own and you get to speak up and talk about um, the norms. People people assume that, for example, women do not like whiskey. You get to talk about whiskey and share about the love for flavor. You also get to travel the world. I am yet to meet a woman that that is not open to traveling the world, both for work. So it gives you all the exposure you need. You are faced with so many challenges because you have to learn to be comfortable with speaking in front of media, speaking in front of a lot of people, speaking in front of the who's in who is who in the in Kenya, as well as relating and connecting with bartenders, which is such an amazing experience for me. I am I'm always grateful to to the opportunities that I get on a daily basis. But the best thing is every day is is a new experience. So you almost can never get bored. It, it's never routine because today you're meeting bartenders, tomorrow you're going to a cocktail event, the next day you're doing a whiskey tasting. So it's just fun. I would advise them to... I would advise them to believe in themselves that they can get the position and that they that they will do tremendously well. You just have to love the job and have a passion for what you do. Um, aside from it, how do you deal with wellness in the industry? I mean, we, we, we get to bust our days, our tongues almost every single day. What's your key advice on <laughs> wellness in terms of how to handle the <laughs> amount of drinks you get? almost every single day. <laughs> uh, wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. First of all, um, being a brand ambassador means that you are the face of the brand. So it doesn't mean that you get to drink all the time. Um, you definitely cannot get drunk on the job. Um, and also you have to keep preaching responsible drinking. So you have to learn how to, yes, you're telling people to, to drink responsibly and uh, how to drink well, but it's, it's, not, it's not what people think. And funny thing, you're not the first person to ask, just because they assume it's a party, but how, how, you, how you handle your wellness, first of all, is hydrating. For me personally, if... If I'm, I'm out maybe at a work function or whatnot, 
I've spaced my drinks with water. Of course, because I know my alcohol limit, I will never have, you will never see me taking shots at all. So water, exercise is important because it keeps your mind fresh and rejuvenated, keeps your skin glowing. Also, it's a good way to stay in shape. So water. I think it's, 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 a, it's something that people don't, people don't take, uh, they never get to understand about being a brand ambassador because after all time, I have to either be on coffee or sparkling water or bitters and uh, sparkling water just to be able to just remind myself that I have to keep, you know, keep saying. Because most of the time you, you end up doing like six or seven events in one particular day and you cannot, but I mean, like just generally go out and drink in almost every event. So, yeah. Well, you, I, I personally enjoy our brand. So I'll, I'll, I'll only, you'll always find me sipping on a cocktail, but definitely uh, space your drinks with water in between. Exercise and know your limit, and definitely do not drink, drink and drive. So if I know that I'm going to a work event and I will be drinking, I will always leave my car at home and uh, take a taxi because we need to stay safe. Um, do you believe that gin is the what the most healthiest drink in the in the categories of what we we teach or train or taste? <laughs> Ah, that's a trick question. I personally never uh, try to portray alcohol as being healthy, but probably you're asking because of the history of gin. So yeah. for those who may not know, gin, gin was um, a medicinal drug. And the story behind it is actually funny. Would you like to hear it, Eugene? I mean, I would. I, I, one thing I know about Tanker is that the guy was... Uh, his dad was a pastor. That's what I know about him. So for guys who don't know, <laughs> he broke away from the court of preaching. <laughs> no, but if we're speaking of uh, hell, yeah. it's more of uh, choose drinks that have been uh, distilled so that they're yeah. of high quality. Stay away from brands that are not um, verified to be authentic. Yeah. So... I, I will not speak of health and gin, but yeah. I always consider it to be one of the healthiest categories, considering the botanicals you have. So for me, I'll recommend it as, um like when you get a cold and stuff like that, you probably use gin and uh, <laughs> tonic. <laughs> well. Well, fun fact about tonic is... um. So actually, how you come to pair gin and tonic, why it's the perfect serve, is back in the day, gin was actually being used as a, as a medicinal drug. But then in a tonic, they would add quinine, which is used to treat malaria, to carbonated exactly. water, to make yeah, yeah. tonic. But then gin was being used to sweeten the tonic water to uh, treat malaria. So... I, I get the relation between <laughs> health, but um, I would not relate alcohol to health. No, but like personally, what I will say with this whole COVID nineteen situation, I think this makes up for perfect uh, medicinal in the house. Like I don't know, guys are not going out, so I'll recommend guys to try gin and tonics, especially during this season. It keeps it, it keeps you fit. I don't know what do you think. <laughs> Okay, so uh, not just for this season, a gin cocktail is the go-to drink for any day, any time, um, as long as you do not overdo it. Especially if you're talking about um, Tanqueray. Um, Tanqueray London Dry is 43.1%. Yeah. Tanqueray number 10 is 47.3%. Yeah, but, so but wait, wait. Question, question. Um, I know we, we, we tend to use the European style of uh, strength, which is like 43.7, but the Americans get uh, the London one at uh, 47.3. What's, why, why the difference? Why the difference in terms of the production that we get here? Is it because uh, the regulation in government is what makes us get that or what? So for London Dry or Tanker? For, for London Dry, the Americans get it at 47.3. Mm -hmm. But here we get it at forty three point seven. What's what's the reason? 
do you, my job or um... it's not regulatory it's just what's preferred for this market yeah. okay yeah well you're talking something about um yeah uh, just give us a history about just Chankari London dredging, just a brief. Okay, so let's start off with in our market, in the Kenyan market, we have two variants for Chankari. And most people do not understand the difference. So this is Chankari 10. I don't know if you can see it clearly. And then to my left, I have London Drive. Okay, mm. so Tankery 10 is the is a more luxurious version of Tankery. This was the initial version. So Tankery, um, Charles, the name Tankery comes from the founder who was called Charles Tankery. He established the distillery back over 180 years ago in the 1830s. So what he set out to do was he wanted to really um, create high standards of gin. So one of the beautiful things that he did is uh, use citrus flavor to, to flavor the gins. And then as you know it, ta every tankery, each of the tankeries has four botanicals. So just in okay. case I confused you by the word botanicals, botanicals comes from the word botany, which is basically the study of plant science. So gin is flavored using botanicals. So both tankeries have four botanicals. The first one definitely has to be water Eugene. Juniper. Juniper berries. Um, yeah. The second botanical is coriander or what most of us may know as uh, dania. Yes. <laughs> which is used as a spice for cooking. Um, the third botanical is angelica. And then the fourth one is licorice. Yeah. So every gene has different botanicals, but this is what sets it apart in terms of flavors, okay? So, so far we've covered the name Tankery comes from the founder who was called Charles Tankery. He started the distillery back in the 1830s. Both Tankeries have four botanicals, but now what I think is very important for people to understand is what separates London Dry from, from Tankery 10 because they yeah. have a different in uh, price. And also they're, so, they're different in terms of uh, the style of gin, because um, you gotta think the London dry gin tankery is more or less the foundation for all other London dry gins. If you look at it, it's right? one of the most, the London dry gin category tankery is one of the most uh, longest of brands. You know, they, they defined what London dry was and when you look at it, it's one of the top six selling brands in the in, in the region or in around the globe. As the oh yeah, oh, yeah. as the most uh, front forward juniper berry style of London gin that you get in the market. Yes, and that's because um, tank in tankery, it's very essential that the flavors from the botanicals are very apparent because you find most genes only have a touch of the flavor, but with tankery, it's very, very important that the flavor is clear and can be tasted even when you're sipping on the gin, even after you add a mixer. Okay. So uh, as I was saying, no, tankery 10 is more or less a new Western style of uh, gin. And, uh, would you mind explaining what a new Western style of gin is? Because most people don't, like people just know well, it's just gin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they're both uh, London jeans, London dry. Mm -hmm. But the three main differences between London dry, which is this, and Tankery 10, they're both from the family of Tankery, but this one is created in uh, smaller batches. So let's start off with the name. Tankery number 10 does not mean that it's 10 years of age. I, I see even on menus people writing Tankery 10 years. That's very wrong. The name 10 comes from the pot still in which Tankery 10 is distilled. So it's created in smaller batches because the flavor experimental is... Experimental still, by the way. Sorry? The, 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 the 10 was an experimental still when they were doing a basis of craft gene which happened to work 
because they were mm-hmm. just more or less trying to you can imagine the craft uh gene when it began the tanker guys were like you know what we also need to do this and it was more or less an experiment on citrus forward uh gin so when you taste tanker return you predominantly get fresh citrus uh notes as compared to most um craft gins that you have in the market you know and that's and true and that is actually because um tanker return is flavored using whole citrus fruits now what this means yeah. most gins use uh, artificial flavoring but tanker return went a step further to use whole citrus fruits which you can imagine is a bit more expensive compared to artificial flavoring but the most predominant citrus fruit used for tankery ten is i don't know if you know the red grapefruit juice the red grapefruit no i, I know what a grapefruit is like like a a big yeah yeah it looks like a humongous orange but yeah. when you cut it inside it has a like a deep maroon pinkish color yeah. Yeah. That's a red fruit and it's not a cheap fruit but that is what is used to flavor tanqueray ten. Now London dry citrus flavor but it's not flavored with the red grape fruit. Okay? Yeah. Remember we're still talking about the differences. But let me just first of all finish about the pot still. So the pot still is called tiny ten. Tiny because it um it's a smaller pot still compared to normal pot stills. So just to bring this into perspective um a normal pot still can hold thousands of liters of a uh, spirit but tiny ten holds up to 500 liters only so someone is asking so they both have the same botanicals and the difference between the two is only let me just explain it like this so tankery ten has an additional four botanicals right and the standard tankery no so yeah so the tanker return has eight botanicals. botanicals yes yeah and the tanker london dry has four standard botanicals just to explain so the four extra botanicals you get in tanker return are the white grapefruit and then the fresh lime the chamomile and uh what's the other one that i'm, I'm forgetting okay let me okay, let me let just take it through this let me answer the question so london dry and ten are both from the same family but if i was to explain the three main differences one tankery ten is distilled in small batches and the pot still is called tiny ten so that's where the name ta- tankery number 10 comes from number two tankery ten is flavored using whole citrus fruits which are distilled in a copper pot still london dry is not difference number 3 just like you mentioned tankery is also infused with chamomile flowers now i don't know if you've ever seen chamomile flowers they look like daisies yes yeah so the result is that it smells great it tastes even better so that is actually what makes it a very sophisticated thing so that is the three main differences between london dry and tankery ten so think of it as one has more attention and detail given to it so that the end result is a sophisticated gin that actually does really well for in in martinis so it's a complete perfect gin drink i hope i've answered the difference between london dry and tanqueray ten i'm sure you have i see jared as join us hi jared thanks for joining Dan Kanyao karibu sana please if you have any questions on um gin or tanker in general just drop them down below we'll be answering them as we go Do you have any more questions on uh tanker or the differences Eugene I think for me um what I always recommend is that when you try in the tanker between the two variances tanker ten works with martini and aviation more or less the modern classics and then when you try in the london dry gin it works well with the gin and tonic but the problem with the gin and tonic uh, cocktail is that there are so many tonics so based on this market what are some of the tonics you recommend for guys to try uh to carry with okay so that's a that's a really good question so for the tonics i think for normal tonic you can go with shrubs it always works 
but I don't know. There's there's another one that comes in a smaller can. I can I the the name has escaped my mind. Twenty which months. Which is more premium? Which is more premium? Twenty so months. You'll find that, yeah, twenty sorry? months premium. Uh, twenty. Sorry. Twenty months. Twenty months. Are those the tiny yeah. cans? Yeah, they have, they have a rose lemonade. They have a ginger tonic. Yeah, they yeah, have yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So why, if you can, if you do not mind sweet drinks, you can go for the normal tonic. But the normal tonics, I find them to be a bit sweeter compared to premium tonic. So if you do not want um, your drink to be too sweet, then go for a premium tonic that has less sweeteners, so it's less sweet. But in case you cannot access a premium tonic, another option that you can do is uh, half and half of normal tonic water and then normal soda water. So it brings down the sweetness because the main difference is the sweetness, to be quite honest. Um, do you have any questions for me? I think the because you more the luxury portfolio type of person. I just love the whole entire category. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Oh, yeah. Sorry, just a, uh, Tilda Brian like, is telling us Indian tonic and fit. Yes, fit is the word yeah. I was looking for. Fitch they are my favorite, too. My favorite is a Kenya original, by the way. Um, the, okay. the Kenyan company. Yeah, they are doing their amazing tonics. They have the classic tonic, they have uh, an Indian turmeric tonic, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. You should try them. I, I, what are the names again? Or you'll just send me the name so I can try them out? Uh, definitely. I mean, have you not tried the Kenyan Originals tonics that, come, that, that have come out recently? I, I, I will. Up to today, I haven't. But they actually have a name called Rose and Cucumber. Rose and Cucumber Sorry? Tonic. The Ooh, one that uh, is, yeah, Rose and Cucumber. Mm -hmm. It'll be that's, very interesting. That's that's Sorry? It'll be, yeah. We should try. I don't know. You you tell me when okay. we should do it. Okay. Plus I need so, a bottle of tea. Even as we're waiting for more questions, I think we can go ahead and recommend what to best have the gin with. What do you think, yes. Eugene? What's your favorite gin cocktail? Um, martini. I love the martini. It's it's my standard. The uh, yes, the classic martini. Okay. Okay. Shaken or stirred. Chicken. <laughs> okay. Well, you know my favorite. About chicken? Sorry. You know, you know what they say about shaking a cocktail, right? No, please tell me. They say the way you shake is the way you make love to someone. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but what I can say yeah. is. Uh, a proper bartender or a proper mixologist is very much like an artist. So it's like yeah. drawing a painting and you want to pay attention to every detail. So even a simple cocktail like the martini can taste different when made with a mediocre bartender uh, compared yeah. to someone that loves, is passionate about making cocktails. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, oh, Bartender Brian says Negroni all the time. Good choice. My favorite I, is actually the Tanqueray Blush, which is quite simple to make, and it tastes amazing. So I don't know if you know about this. Before, I used to love whiskey, but when I met Tanqueray 10, it was a whole different love affair. So my favorite cocktail has Tanqueray 10, a double of Tanqueray 10, uh, top up with premium tonic because I am not a sweet tooth. I prefer drinks that are not too sweet. But then, remember I mentioned Tanqueray 10 is flavored with whole citrus, citrus fruit, which predominantly is the red grapefruit. So if yeah. you can get a red grapefruit and then squeeze about 15 ml of the fruit, of the fresh red grapefruit juice, and then add it to the Tanqueray 10 and tonic, star, yeah and served first of all the smell is amazing it's an amazing drink so that even when you're sipping it it's just <sighs> refreshing it's not too sweet it's not too sour plus it's easy to make so 
I can actually drop a video of how to do my favorite cocktail that is a tankery glass. <laughs> I, I will. see Brian saying, he's saying that uh, the Negroni is his favorite. He likes a Negroni with tankery London dry. And he oh. says he go. Yeah. Good choice. So, fun fact, London Dry actually won uh, gold for from the Gene Awards last year in terms of taste. So, people voted it as the best taste gin in 2019. So, definitely, the London Dry is a perfect choice. Fun fact about Tankari 10, it, is a, uh -huh. it won an award at the San, San Francisco yes. Spirits Competition. Yes. Yes, yes oh, I can see your homework. <laughs> Fun fact, Charles Tankery, his dad was a pastor. <laughs> he chose to do something else. Fun I fact, he had a choice between choosing a career in horse, horses and their feet, creating horseshoe mm -hmm. feet, and uh, producing gin. Thank God he chose gin. <laughs> Thank God to all of us, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, someone is saying I'm actually getting a lot from this. I'm so happy to hear that. Please sending in your questions, anything around gin, about tankery, about where you can get it. Um, I think something that we may have forgotten to mention up until this yeah. time is with all that's going on, we obviously have to practice social distancing and stay at home. So we understand that, and of course, we got you. So you can actually order for your favorite gin, London Dry and Tanqueray 10, and have it delivered to your home. So um, I will give, I will, I, I will post it on my Instagram, and I'll also share it with Eugene on the numbers you can call, or you can, you can even DM me and place your order and have the drink delivered to your doorstep so that you do not have to go out to get the gin and still stay at home, stay safe, and enjoy your favorite drink. Uh, I, Brian is saying that the London Dry looks like a cocktail shaker. <laughs> Which oh my God, you guys are amazing. So that is true. It's because the bottle is, is inspired by... Um, the classic cocktail shaker. So Tanqueray is the preferred gin to make cocktails by top pretenders around the world. So to recognize the, um, the to recognize and appreciate pretenders, Tanqueray came up with a brilliant idea to shape the bottle and design it as a cocktail shaker. So I don't know if you if you know what a cocktail shaker, but if you do, this is the top that comes off after you shake and then you strain into the glass. And then, of course, this is the lid, the top, and then the rest is like the, can I call it a Boston tin? So, yes, Brian, you're right. The bottle shape and design is actually um, inspired by, by the classic cocktail shaker. Um. Which reminds me, there are other expressions of tankery. When are we getting to see them in this market? Or are we not going to get to see them? Like the Ranga Pool <laughs> and uh, what's the other one? Um, the Old Tom. Okay, so that's a good question. What I can't reveal much um, because it's kind of a, a surprise but we're working on bringing in more tankery expressions into the market but that's all i'm going to say for now i will not tell you when but just you can look out for more expressions of tankery because yes we do have a lot happening in terms of innovation for tankery. I mean, I'll say this, having tasted uh, the three expressions, the Rangapu is actually very interesting. Uh -huh. But it's not in this market, you know, I'm just, for guys who are wondering what the Rangapu is, it's, it's, a, it's an Indian style, Brit, Indian British style of tankery. It will work very well for the Indian market. Mm -hmm. 
considering it has this um so you gotta think about the botanicals once again most of these botanicals come f comes from asia so with the coriander on the pendamons from asia they have taken that and just try to highlight that which really is appealing especially to an indian tonic so you gotta think about the indian tonic the brand said which is amazing as well okay interesting yeah. You know what? What I'd love to hear. I see Masai Noma join. Hey, Natasha, good to see you, Captain. What a Captain! Thank you for joining. Um, tell us, what do you guys think about uh, gin cocktails? What's your favorite gin cocktails? Um, and while you tell us that, I can see Brian is asking: Is Diageo working on creating a premium vermouth? My dream. <laughs> <laughs> well subject to confirmation but that's actually a good idea you know what i wish we had more of in kenya is um like flavored syrups that are very premium and easily accessible because like for example they, there are so many cocktails that we'd like to try out out there but if i was to try and create a, a, a cocktail that has elderflower syrup how easy would that be to get right now even in nairobi eugene i mean it's pretty hard and also elderflower is not something that's available here but what i think about is what about those botanicals we have in this market the ones that we grew up with why are we not taking them and turning it into as uh, again as vermouth or syrups or liqueurs that we can use behind the bar because you know, most that's people take away from the traditional botanicals that we have you know I think I think that's a good question, and maybe Brian, I'll throw this back at you. Brian, I know for you in person, you are an amazing bartender, one of the best in uh, one of the best that I know of. You have all this knowledge about creating syrups. How about you start your own? You start experimenting at home and making samples, and you know. No, maybe you'll just get investors and turn it into your own brand. How about that, Brian? Start creating your own um, syrups and vermouths. And, you know, Eugene, to bring that up, I, I think one of the reasons why we don't have as many locally made, I feel we do not have enough knowledge on how to make them. Or maybe we do not have I think that's not, a, that's not an excuse because in Nigeria we have Origin, which is also a product under EABL. All right. But then Origin is like a herbal liquor by West Africans. If they can do it, why not us? Because we they can. more or less have the same experience or same knowledge it's just that we don't want to use it not that we don't want i think we just need to be challenged more we need to believe in ourselves and it brings me back to what i said in the beginning even to, to more women that are looking to join the industry you just need to believe in yourself and understand that you can do it i i think we can i would be so proud to use locally made vermouth and syrups while doing my cocktail videos. I would be super proud about it. So why not? Funny enough, that's something I'm working on, but it's just, <laughs> it's, on the, it's on the pipeline, you know, it's always going to be on the pipeline. Okay, so when can, expect, when can we expect, what can we expect? No, but they, I will have a batch of something interesting. So like, where I stay, I have lavender, I have lemongrass, I have lemon verbena, I have quinine, the plant. So I have this combined and then I have chili. So it's a very interesting mix. Mm -hmm. I will encourage you to try it out. I don't know if, if you like it or you know, it's, it's not for everyone. What about even uh, making uh, a jeans liqueur? Because I feel like the Kenyan market is more on the sweeter side. I feel like Kenyans mm -hmm. do not 
favor bitter drinks. So I think a gin liqueur could also do well. Why not try that, Eugene? But what's interesting is I'm not, uh, what's the word? I'm not a sweet tooth. But it's not for you. It's for the Kenyan market. <laughs> <laughs> like if you ask Brand, Brand will tell you, every time I go and visit uh, Pepper Tree, he will always serve me something that is sour. I don't understand mm -hmm. what's the thing with sweetness. Because sweetness is a state of mind. It's not supposed to be sweet as in terms of sugar, but sweetness in terms of the nosing. You know? Something that is lacking. Like it's just a you know, preference of taste. We are all different and we all have different taste and flavor notes. So why not go for it? Um, Monica, thank you for joining. I am Gads. Thank you so much for joining. So for the guys that are just joining now, the discussion is around gin. We have covered so much already. We've covered about tankery. We've covered about a bit about the history of gin. So if you do have any questions, please shoot them in. Uh, we'll be happy to we'll be happy to answer them. And while we're doing that, let me just recommend a few gin cocktails that I think taste amazing. So for London Dry, try it with a classical classic uh, martini. So which basically has a, a double of Tanqueray London Dry and vermouth, um, shaken or stirred, whatever your preference is. Uh, for Tankari 10, the Tankari blush, which I already went. You can just see my face lighting up when I, when I talk about the <laughs> Or you can also try uh, Berry Collins uh, for those who prefer sweeter drinks. So the good thing about a Berry Collins is that you can even make your own homemade berry puree. Just mix it up with uh, sugar, water to make a berry syrup, and then add a highball glass. In a highball glass, you can add some ice and then a double of tankery and then top up with. So now this is where the if you like something that is sweet, you can top up with uh, you can add a bit of sugar syrup, about 15 ml. And then top up with, with what do you like to top up your berry collins with, Eugene? Ginger ale. Or ginger beer, I mean. I love my ginger. I, I'm a spicy person, you know. Life okay, is too so... <laughs> so I like to top up my Barry Collins with soda water. Yeah. Add the 15 ml berry puree, stir and serve. It's a perfect cocktail. Very sweet, very refreshing. Do you have any other cocktail, gin cocktails that are easy to make that we can recommend for guys to make at home, Eugene? Um, just before that, let me answer a question that Brian has asked. Could, could you recommend some nice links on vermouth? Our market is rich and we can get fresh botanicals. Um, just for guys to know, a vermouth is an aromatized wine. So you gotta think, you take your regular wine and then you blend it with a with a neutral grain spirit that has botanicals and it's something that anyone can do so uh not anyone sorry to say that but guys who understand the process so i don't know what vermouths are your favorite in the market so far what okay. are your favorite um, ones because you spoke about you me? yeah I do not have any favorites, to be honest. Um, it just depends on the cocktail that I'm having. Okay. I personally do not have any. I can see Susan Holler just joined. Thank you for joining, Susan. I can see you asking something about tonic. What about tonic? Please, I, I don't understand the question. What are you asking about tonic? And for those who may not know, uh, tonic um, it's basically carbonated water. And then you add a bit of quinine. Quinine is also used to treat malaria. So that is what yeah. that is the, the bitter taste that you get from tonic water. That's actually malaria. But of course, today's modern uh, basic tonic has less, less amounts of quinine. But yeah, that is what tonic is. Brian Antica formula and okay. I'm a, this is his favorite, his go-to vermouths. Yeah. So uh, you are asking me what my favorite, oh, there is what you call, I know most people don't like to Sorry, use this. Sorry, I don't know why, but your, your, your audio went down. 
Can just you hear me? Of the yeah. Yeah. So I was saying, um, I know most people don't get. To, I know. I know most people don't get to use this 